Why are you overprotective? Why do you hover over them? But I just, I think it's called love. Don't you? Hello, fellow plant weirdos. It's your girl, Carmiel Marceline, and I'm so happy that you're here. If you are new, hey, Hey, welcome to the family. We unabashedly hyper fixate on plants here. And some would say that I fixate too much on them. I'm a little too involved. I love them a little too much. I think it's personally the right amount. Carmiel, why are you a over-involved plant parent? Why are you overprotective? Why do you hover over them? Personally, I don't understand why I get asked these questions, but I just seem to do. Do you understand why? Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to share not one, not two, 10 signs that you are a helicopter plant parent. So get ready to find out if you're just as bad as me. Sign number one, you attempt to unfurl a leaf by yourself. Why I think that I should be the one to unfurl a leaf versus let the plant do it on its own like it has been doing for generations before me, couldn't tell you. It could be a mixture of anxiety and impatience, but I just, I think it's called love, don't you? The plant that experiences this amount of love the most is my bird of paradise. There's something about when I get a new sphere, a new leaf with my bird of paradise that I just, I, I just, oh, I just want to eh, unfurl it myself. Why? Couldn't tell you. But what ends up happening to me is that it bites me in the butt. I, I start off strong, I'm like, okay, all right. I'm not gonna tear this leaf, mm -mm, not today, and look at what happens. I end up tearing it, and it looks hideous. Will I stop? Probably not. And we don't need to talk about it anymore. Sign number two, you constantly move them around. When I lived in my old apartment back in Queens, I only had north and south facing windows. But boy, let me tell you, those south facing windows were everything. But of course, me being the stubborn self that I am, if that's even the right word to use, I wanted plants everywhere around my apartment. In my closet, in my bathroom, in my kitchen, in my bedroom, in my living room. I wanted greenery everywhere. Because of that, and because I didn't want to supplement the lack of light with grow lights, your girl would literally take, imagine this was my Monstera. I would take my Monstera and move it. And this was heavy. This was about like a 20 plus pound plant, okay? This was a big Bertha, okay? She's a big mama. And I would drag and carry her all the way from my bedroom to those south facing windows every single day. And I would bring it back every single night. I mean, it made sense in my head at the time. Don't be quizzing me on it now. I also like to swap different plants around, like their, their locations. I know that it supposedly adds stress to the plant for it to constantly be moved, but honestly, I don't see it. My plants seem to do just fine. Sign number three, you can't help but always stare at them. I am guilty of this, guilty as charged. I wake up every morning and I see my beautiful Ikea greenhouse cabinet just, just, well, actually I'm woken up by the grow lights that are automatically timed, but I see them and I can't help but get out of bed and immediately crawl over to that cabinet where I just, I just stare longingly at every single plant on every shelf for, I don't know how long, it seems like a minute. Ethan says it, it's probably 15, but he, he doesn't have any sense of time. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And I don't think it's weird at all, right? Like Ethan will catch me mid-stare 
with my plants. He'll just walk into the bedroom and just be like, are you, are you good? Are you okay? And I don't think it's weird at all because I just, I just want to know how they're doing. You know, are, are they doing well? Do they need to be watered? Do they need to be trimmed back? Do they need me? Yes, they do. Of course they do. Sign number four, you overwater them. I, Carmiel Marceline, am an overwaterer. I fully accept that. And in my head, it makes sense because my plants need me. It just so happens that my love for plants manifests in giving it lots of water. I mean, if I need more than 64 ounces of water each day, I do not understand why my plant only needs a couple of dribbles of water. Also, if I see a yellow leaf, of course, my immediate conclusion is, she needs a little bit more water. If I gave her more water, I'm sure it would do just fine. Oftentimes I'm, I'm wrong because what happens? Root rot. Ah! Sign number five, you have a strict plant care regimen. My plants operate on a very, very tight schedule and routine. I do not deviate from said routine, okay? Some could say that I run a very tight ship. Well, thank you, that is, that is an amazing compliment. I have to water my plants every week, week and a half, sometimes more, of course, when the soil is dry, kind of. And after that, I have to, every month, dust off my leaves, wipe them with neem oil, say a prayer, meditate, give them praise. And then every two months, like clockwork, I need to add systemic granules, mix it into the top of the soil, the top couple of inches using the same spoon that I've used for the last two years. And then of course, add fertilizer. I use earthworm organic castings and I have been again for the longest time. So no, I, I need to stick to that plan. Sign number six, you constantly check in on them when you're out of town. When I go on vacation, I can't help but worry about my plants. Yes, I, I of course worry about my, my amazing dog Otis, but dogs, you know, like you feed them, you bring them out to use the bathroom, you play with them, you give them be on top of their meds and their hygiene. And it's pretty self-explanatory, right? But with plants, it takes you years and years to master them, if at all. I still haven't mastered them. So me feeling good about someone who doesn't put in the time to take care of my plants, yeah, mm-hmm. Tell me if you know someone who does feel comfortable about that, okay? And when I was in Asia last year, I had my amazing partner, Ethan, take care of my plants. I actually shared the aftermath of that moment with you all and had you vote and rate his performance. And a lot of you said that he was, gave him a glowing review. Uh, still debating if I agree with that, but that's beside the point. He would send me pictures of our son, Otis, the dog, and I loved it, yes, 100%. But then I would ask him for pictures of my plants. Hey, can you, can you take a picture of this plant, this plant, this plant, this plant, this plant, this plant? I just, I wanna see how they're doing. Are they okay? Are they okay? Are they alive? Sign number seven, you over-fertilize. Now that I think about it, this becomes more of an issue during the growing season, the spring, summertime, because not only do I have my organic earthworm castings that I put on top of my soil that you're supposed to update every two months, I also, I just, I want them to, to be full, to be healthy, to be luscious. So then of course I dilute my powdered fertilizer and fertilize them again. Is it the smartest thing to do? Probably not. Should I stop doing it? Probably yes. Sign number eight, you rearrange the layout of your home based on your plants needs. 
Parents of, of human children need to baby-proof or child-proof their homes. I don't understand why I can't do the same thing for mine, for my plant babies, right? I mean, there's limited real estate by the windows, the windowsills, the coffee tables. I need to make sure that I leverage as much of that space as possible for them. They need the sunlight. My furniture, on the other hand, does not. Yeah, Ethan and I just bought a, a new armchair and he at first was, hey, I'm gonna put it by the window right now where I currently have my coffee table with a bazillion of my houseplants just like littered on top. And I was like, no way, Jose Bueno. We are not doing that right now. My plants and that coffee table need to be over there. That armchair, it can find its own place in the rest of the apartment. Sign number nine, you move into an apartment with windows that face the right direction for optimal sunlight. Do not judge me for this, do not. But when Ethan and I were looking for a new apartment back in 2021, I wanted an apartment that had amazing access to sunlight, okay? Had to have big windows, needed to have direct sunlight exposure. And you know what I did for every single apartment showing? I used my, my phone's compass. Yeah, if you didn't realize your phone has that, especially iPhones. Yep. They do, and you bet I was pointing them in the direction of the window to tell what direction they were facing. Because no, I was not going to do a north facing window again. Not on my watch. For those of you that are interested, the idea would have been ginormous southwest facing windows, but of course, uh, that comes with a higher price tag and rent and that couldn't really find that very limited availability So what did, what sufficed? Well, I, I do love our current spot We've got like 20 foot five foot ce ceilings and ginormous windows that are facing eastward So, you know, yes, would I 100% take the south facing? Yep, but these will do for now Sign number 10, reluctant to bring your plants outside. So for me, this manifests mostly in terms of not wanting to leave our windows open. <laughs> Ethan knows a little too well. He's like, hey, I really want some fresh air. Can, can I open the window? And I'm like, for, for 10 minutes, but I don't know what's out there. I don't know what pests are gonna come up to the third floor of our apartment building, come through the window and get into my plants on the leaves in the soil. No way, no way. Honestly, the same thing would also apply if we had a patio or a backyard. I would be too afraid to expose my babies to the elements. I don't know what's out there and I definitely do not wanna find out. There you have it, those are 10 signs that you are a helicopter plant parent. Were any of these signs relatable to you? Are there any of them that you also do in your life? Do you not want to admit that? <laughs> are there any ones that I forgot to include? Let me know down in the comments. If you liked today's video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified every single time I post, ring that notification bell. And with that, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for spending your time with me and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, bye.